we're going to learn the secret of the prayers. Some of our prayers will be accepted in 40 days. Hashem is waiting 40 days and then he accepts the prayer. Some prayers are accepted after 20 days. Some prayers are accepted after three days. Some prayers are accepted after one day. And some prayers, before you finish your request, you already got it. Before you finish your request, you already got it. As it's written, Terem ikrao v'ani e'ene. Terem ikrao v'ani e'ene. It happens a lot. A lot. How does Hashem decide how long it will take for your prayers to be accepted? There are many, many reasons for it. One depends how holy you are. If you're a very holy man, your prayers are more powerful and accepted faster because there's no sins for that Satan can use to prevent from Hashem ex to accept your prayers. There's no kitrug. Second, depend on how much you're watching your eyes. If you look all days of the ladies, you don't have holiness in your neshama. The Satan is using it against you. If you speak a lot of gossip, Lashon Hara, the Satan is using it against you. A filthy mouth like this that destroyed the life of people with his gossip re will request something for himself and you run to perform for him? Where is the justice? This righteous person, you made him wait 20 days or 40. This guy with his filthy mouth, you're helping him to get it right away? Within an hour he got what he requested? It's not, it's not fair. But if you don't speak Lashon Hara, the Satan doesn't have a case. If you give a lot of charity, you give a lot of tzedakah, then it eliminates the ability of the Satan to make cases against you. Because you are loved specially by Hashem. And the Satan is thinking a million times before he gets Hashem angry by coming to speak negative against you. Because you're helping so many miserable people every day with your generous heart. When someone like that, it's very hard to be mekatreg on him. If you learn a lot of Torah, you can go and make tons of money, but instead you sit and learn Torah all day in yeshiva and live simple life with a little budget. When the Satan wants to come and say that Hashem should not listen to your prayers, he is risking himself. Someone that sits 14, 15 hours a day and give his life for my Torah, which makes me the happiest, you dare to bring me negative things against him? So you obviously understand that when you go to a holy big chacham, big rabbi, that his life is all day, always, always in the Torah, and he will pray for you, your chances are now just got a thousand percent greater that the prayers will be accepted. And there is also one more thing, how much merit, merit that person has. Merit. What does it mean merit? How many good things happened in the world thanks to you? Thanks to your mouth, thanks to your actions, thanks to your donations, thanks to all the things you've done in your life. Thanks to how many people you made them religious and now they make Hashem happy. So when someone made billions and trillions of good deeds for Hashem, he has a special VIP status. And it's written as a clear verse, that this person, if he says something, Hashem must take it to consideration. Must take it to consideration. Why? Because there's no one that have done so much for Hashem like that person. That's why his blessings, his prayers, when he prays for someone or anything like that, helps the person the most you can imagine. The most. Why? Because the more happy you make Hashem with your life, 
the more he's willing to accept your prayers. So obviously, if you mechalel Shabbat, if you are a sote, a mentally sick person that lives with your own kind, and you are all day watching dirty things, and you are not giving any charity, and you eat everything you see, and you live with no holiness, no tarat mishpacha, no mikve, no nothing. The way you dress, your body is full of tattoos. It's so dirty that as soon as you open your mouth, the satan have thousands of kitrugim against you. Look at him, look how he looks. How does he dare to even come and ask you? That's why, Rabotai, there are things in life that once you do it, there's no way to go back. Fill up your body with tattoos. Good luck erasing it now. Some people make surgeries. Men become women, women becomes men. One day, if one day they want to repent, it's too late for them. Became a woman now. How is he going to come to the shul? He wants to come to pray on Yom Kippur. Where is he going to sit? By the men, by the women? There's a lot of problems here. Meuvat lo yuchal itkon. Some things you did in your life, there's no way to fix. So, okay. Almost all of us did things like this in our past. In our, in our young days. Who didn't write in the internet bad comments? about individuals that were on the news. It travels to thousands of ears and, and eyes. There's no way to save it now. The rumors continue to travel. The people that you wrote about continue to suffer 10 years later. It's still online. Yes, it stays. What you put, that's it. Google finds it. How are you going to fix it? Not everything can be fixed. So what are we going to do? Only one thing. Cry non-stop to Hashem to forgive us. We were stupid. We were not aware of what we were doing. Please, please have mercy on us. Please, please, please. And Hashem may have mercy on you based on what you became from now on. You used to be terrible, but now Hashem sees what a drastic change, 180 degrees. No more Lashon Ara, no more internet, no more provocative clothes in the street. No more of all these horrible things you used to do. One year, five years, ten years, twenty years. At one point, even the Satan has no claim against you. 